In the 90s, parties used to look like this. And this. People focused on decorating a room, but now wearables are king. The biggest change in our business really has been the development of wearables. Party City customers want hats, funny glasses, ugly sweaters, and clever costumes. That's especially important during Halloween, which makes up 20 to 25% of Party City's annual sales. But in 2019, the company's offerings didn't resonate with shoppers. Halloween is Party City's most important season. Its financial results for October are eagerly anticipated by investors. In 2019, Party City said its October results were disappointing. Party City's revenue for the fiscal month was $432 million, 7% less than in 2018. The stock crashed 67% in one day. It went down so much, it was shocking. And I think that partly was a reflection of them telling the world how bad Halloween had been and everybody knowing that if you can't win in a party business on Halloween, it's hard to win, right? Retail analysts say weak Halloween sales are part of a larger trend as consumers pick big, one-stop shops and online retailers over specialty stores. They're facing a challenge because consumers are not going to destination shopping venues. They are consolidating their shopping. They're making it easier. They're doing more online. Party City says it can improve Halloween sales, but there are more challenges facing the company. Some aren't within their control, like trade tensions and a global helium shortage. But others, like an outdated e-commerce platform, show the brand just might not resonate with consumers anymore. In 2019, the company plans to close 54 of its roughly 900 locations in the U.S. Consumer patterns are changing. Can Party City change too? Party City is both a retailer and a supplier, so it produces most of what it sells in stores. That's rare in retail. In addition to operating about 900 stores, Party City also claims to be the world's largest designer, manufacturer, and distributor of party goods. Through its wholesale business, over 40,000 retail locations worldwide sell its products, including some of its biggest competitors. Right now, that's really the healthy part of the business, right? That's where they're making their money, and that's what's keeping them in the game, and that's why People aren't too worried about them going broke before 2023 or someplace out there. On the other hand, yeah, you're competing with yourself. Party City actually started out as just a retailer. In 1986, entrepreneur Steve Mandel dreamed of opening a store, and he saw a big opportunity in the party goods market. At the time, there were lots of independent family-owned shops selling party supplies, but no major retailers. Mandel scraped together $125,000 and opened the first party city in East Hanover, New Jersey in 1986. Early on, Mandel saw huge potential in Halloween. By his second year of business, he turned a quarter of his stores into a Halloween costume warehouse. By 1993, Party City had 58 stores and revenues of $2.4 million. One year later, in 1994, Party City's net profits more than doubled. And Mandel's ambitions grew too. He envisioned a chain of a thousand stores and decided to take the company public to achieve that growth. Investors saw potential for Party City to become a category killer. That's when a store or chain absolutely dominates a specific category by offering lots of products at a competitive price. Some past examples of category killers are Toys R Us, Best Buy, and Home Depot. I think that what Party City found, especially when they started, was that they could be a category killer. And so if you think about Halloween, it's the eighth biggest holiday in the United States. There's not a great reason for someone else to jump in that market and try to be another category killer with them. Party City went public in March of 1996, selling 1.7 million shares at $10 each. At the time, U.S. party supplies were a $3 billion a year business, growing at 10% annually. 1996 and 1997 were years of strong growth for Party City. But the party ended in 98 when Party City missed its third quarter financial goals. The stock price fell below $10. 1999 was another hard year for the company. Its inventory tracking system hadn't kept up with the company's growth. So Party City couldn't conduct a year-end inventory of its stores or an audit, a violation of SEC rules. The NASDAQ suspended trading of Party City's stock and delisted it in July 1999. 
Over the next few months, Party City tried to avoid bankruptcy. The company had borrowed $58.6 million against a $60 million line of credit. The new CEO, James Shea, redesigned stores, adding brighter lights and organizing merchandise by category. Party City recovered, and its stock returned to the NASDAQ in 2001. The company's performance was lackluster, and the company's profits were unimpressive. Party City's board of directors accepted a buyout offer in 2005, and Party City became a private company again. This is when Party City first got into the business of making the products it was selling. As a vertically integrated company, Party City rose to the top of the party goods market. In 2011, profits jumped 55% to $76.4 million. In 2015, Party City again went public. In its filings to go public, Party City said it was the leading party goods retailer in North America. Shares rose more than 20% when the company went public after pricing its IPO at $17. That interest didn't last long. In its first year of trading, shares of Party City fell nearly 12%. Since 2015, shares of Party City have fallen close to 90%. But by the numbers, it's a pretty healthy company. These guys still make money all the time, and most of their stores make money. The company's annual revenue has grown six out of seven years since 2012. Despite Party City's profitability, its retail business has shown signs of a struggle. Sales at stores open more than a year have been negative for seven out of the past nine quarters. The company also carries high debt of about $2 billion, which analysts say might have spooked some investors. And I don't think Party City is really doing very much wrong. I think the world has passed them by. And I think we're starting to see that in their numbers. You saw just how bad it's been recently. Some of the problems facing Party City are outside of their control, but other missteps show that the company hasn't caught up. In the past, Party City has bounced back from some major challenges, including near bankruptcy, lawsuits, and a delisting. Right now, the company is in another tough spot. Ever since its second year in business, Halloween has been the most important time of year for Party City. Each season, the company opens hundreds of Halloween pop-ups, hiring seasonal workers to guide customers through picking the perfect costume. Sales for the holiday have been weak for the four years since 2016. Halloween is a pretty significant holiday for Party City, and so to, to fall short four years in a row, that creates a lot of pressure and it creates a lack of confidence in investors. The National Federation of Retailers estimated shoppers would spend $8.8 .8 billion on Halloween in 2019, 200 million less than the 2018 projections. Competition steps up for Party City around Halloween. It opens hundreds of Halloween pop-up stores called Halloween City. In 2019, sales at the temporary store decreased 20.8% from the year prior. Party City said an industry-wide dip in sales contributed to its lousy October sales numbers. The company also claimed it hadn't lost Halloween market share, but analyst Joe Feldman said competitors were better positioned and better priced. Party City's Halloween competitors include Spirit Halloween, Walmart, and Target. Halloween and third quarter results in 2019 sent Party City stock tumbling 67% in one day, from $6.10 to $2 a share. Party City executives said the weak results were due to a shortage of helium and weaker consumer spending over Halloween. Executives said more people were also opting to make their own costumes. I bet there's a grain of truth to that, that maybe that costume game is getting upped. People are maybe doing some more creative things. That doesn't get you off the hook for being the source where people can put together great costumes. In order to stay competitive, retail stores need a solid online presence. If you've shopped at Party City recently, you might have noticed it doesn't have a designated desk for customers who buy products online to pick up in store. That, plus the absence of self-checkout, can cause huge lines at Party City. I think when you walk into an environment and there's 50 to 100 people in line, you probably just shake your head and think, why would I have to deal with this? Changing shopping habits are one risk factor that led credit rating agencies to downgrade the company in 2019. Party City also carries high debt. Analysts say that makes investors wary. They do need to reduce debt. I think there's some concern from investors that there's a high amount of leverage. Party City has taken steps to reduce debt by selling off some assets, including manufacturing facilities. 
it sold its Canadian retail operations, which was about 65 stores in August 2019, and used some of the proceeds from the $131 million sale to pay down debt. Party City is taking steps to mitigate debt and improve Halloween performance. But there are some headwinds the company just can't control. Party City has cited a helium shortage as a potential risk to its business. Its helium business helps differentiate Party City from e-commerce platforms. You wouldn't exactly want two-day shipping for helium balloons. But due to a global shortage of helium in 2019, Party City lost some of its competitive edge. The balloon is a big driver of party sales because if a customer is going to go in for a helium balloon, they'll often then buy the other party supplies around it. Party City didn't run out of helium completely, but its supply was well below capacity. And analysts say sales took about a 2% hit in each of the first three quarters of 2019. As of October 2019, the company's helium was back to full supply. Its dependence on helium is a unique business challenge for a retailer. But one challenge that's been felt by companies in nearly every sector, the trade war. Party City said tariffs on Chinese imports caused temporary operation disruptions in the second half of 2018 due to increased freight costs. Importing its products made in China was more expensive for Party City. As of August 2019, about $50 million worth of Party City products were subject to tariffs of 25%. Analysts say the company dealt with tariffs by moving production to other countries and raising retail prices on certain products. Party City said China tariffs hurt Halloween 2018 sales, but one analyst told CNBC the tariffs didn't make much of an impact on its 2019 Halloween sales. Party City's done a very good job mitigating a lot of the tariff pressure, but there is some bit of tariff pressure, and it was weighing on the company's business for the past year. Retail experts say Party City is losing relevance with some consumers. On earnings calls with analysts, executives are trying to figure out how to get it back. I believe Party City has some strategies in place to turn around the business, to have more dedicated sales associates to help plan parties when you're in the store, and just really to make it a more exciting and invigorating experience. Party City has the advantage of low competition in wholesale. The party goods they make are sold in 40,000 retail stores. In this day and age, they have to do a very serious look at, are we going to be a wholesaler? Are we going to be a retailer? Are we going to be both? In order to compete with Amazon, analysts say Party City needs to sell a unique shopping experience customers wouldn't find online. Those are long-term problems that question the very structure of the business, and they don't have an easy answer. But there are some upsides for the company in the short term. Investors are still cautious about Halloween results. But in 2020, the holiday falls on a Saturday. That indicates consumers will spend more. Although analysts warn the November 3rd presidential elections could put a damper on spending. Party City's helium supply is back to full capacity, which may help drive sales for the entire retail business. And Party City appointed an industry veteran as CEO of the retail business in July 2019. They're just not a business that the investor looks at and goes, yeah, this is the future. Because you know what? This is not the future. <laughs>